welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. Now, where am I taking you back to today? Well, to the reign of King Henry VIII, which was a very eventful reign. But on this day in Tudor history, the 7th of April, 1537, Robert Ask and Thomas Darcy, first Baron Darcy, were sent to the Tower of London. So something bad happened on this day in history, I'm sorry. Both of these men had been involved in a very famous rebellion, the Pilgrimage of Grace Rebellion of late 1536. Ask, Robert Ask, was one of the rebel leaders and Lord Darcy had become involved with the rebels after yielding his castle, Pontefract Castle, to them. Darcy ended up being beheaded on the 30th of June 1537 and Robert Ask was hanged in chains on the 12th of July 1537. Now let me tell you a little bit more about Robert Ask and how he became involved in the Pilgrimage of Grace Rebellion. Well, Ask was born in around 1500. He was a Yorkshireman and he had some good family links. He was related to Henry Clifford, first Earl of Cumberland. Ask studied law and in the late 1520s he was secretary to Henry Percy, 6th Earl of Northumberland, before going on to work as a lawyer handling cases in the Star Chamber in London. His biographer R.W. Hoyle notes that Ask was actually on his way to London for the start of the law term, uh, travelling through Lincolnshire when he became involved in the Lincolnshire Rising, which was the very start of the Pilgrimage of Grace Rebellion. If you have seen or heard my talk for the 4th of October on the Pilgrimage of Grace Rebellion, uh, which I'll give you a link to in case you haven't uh, listened to that, you'll know that the rising in Lincolnshire was actually sparked off by a sermon at Evensong on the 1st of October 1536 at St James's Church in Louth in which the vicar preached a sermon which is thought to have affirmed that the church or its faith or both were in danger. And then also by a visitation from the Bishop of Lincoln's Registrar on the 2nd of October. This registrar tried to read out Thomas Cromwell's commission to the townspeople. His papers ended up being ripped from his hands and burned and things escalated very quickly from that point. On the 4th of October, Dr Raines, the Chancellor of the Bishop of Lincoln, who was staying nearby at Bolingbroke after having held a session of the Commissioner's Court there, was dragged from his sick bed and taken to Horncastle. He was then terribly pulled from his horse and murdered by a rebel mob. One of Thomas Cromwell's men was also hanged by the mob. On the 5th of October at Sawcliffe in North Lincolnshire, Ask, who'd arrived in the area, was taken by the rebels and after hearing of their complaints, their grievances, he swore his allegiance to them. The rebels then sent their grievances in a letter to King Henry VIII and their complaints, their grievances included the dissolution of the monasteries, the grant to the king of the tenths and first fruits of spiritual benefices, the promotion of men like Thomas Cromwell and Richard Rich to the king's council, and the promotion of the archbishops of Canterbury and Dublin, the Bishop of Rochester, the Bishop of St David's, and other men who, in their opinion, clearly subverted the faith of Christ. So they, they sent these grievances to the king. And on the 8th of October 1536, Robert Ask, who'd gone back to Yorkshire to muster people to the rebel cause, called the people of the town of Beverley together, asking them to be true to God, the king, the commonwealth, and to maintain the holy church. 
And by the time the king's reply to the rebel grievances um, arrived by Herald on the 11th of October, Robert, Robert Ask was seen as the rebel's chief captain. Now, King Henry VIII was absolutely furious with the rebels. They were his subjects. It was not for them to complain to him about who he chose as his advisers and bishops and that. And he didn't, surprisingly, not surprisingly, he didn't give in to uh, any of their demands. Historian R.W. Hoyle explains that it was only after the disintegration of the Lincolnshire Revolt that Ask wrote his own oath, gave the movement the title of the Pilgrimage of Grace and shifted it from the broad Commonwealth concerns of the Lincoln Articles to the critique of Cromwell's religious policies contained in his oath. So Ask was very much complaining um, about the religious policies that Thomas Cromwell was responsible for. On the 19th of October 1536, Robert Ask and the rebels arrived at Pontefract in Yorkshire and threatened an assault of Pontefract Castle, which was owned by the man I mentioned at the start of this talk, Thomas Darcy, first Baron Darcy. Early the next morning, Lord Darcy surrendered his castle to the rebels and swore the rebel oath, along with the other inhabitants of the castle, which included Edmund Lee, Archbishop of York. Now, there had been no fighting, uh, no violence at all, and Darcy actually sympathised with the rebel cause and agreed with their grievances. So no force was necessary for him to surrender the castle to them and to swear an oath, uh, the rebel oath. Ask went on to rally other members of the gentry. And by the 24th of October, 1536, the rebel force numbered 30 thousand men and it far outnumbered uh, that of the royal force led by the Duke of Norfolk and the Earl of Shrewsbury. Uh, that was said to be about a fifth of the size. However, there was no battle in this uh, rebellion at all. They decided to negotiate. The Duke of Norfolk gave the rebels promises from Henry VIII that the people's demands would be met and that they would be pardoned. Robert Ask, because of that, then dismissed his troops. Unfortunately, King Henry VIII went on to break his promises to the rebels after there was further trouble, a further rebellion in Yorkshire in January 1537, led by Sir Francis Bigod. Robert Ask actually tried to prevent that rebellion. He tried to prevent that trouble. But he and the other men who'd been involved in the earlier rebellion, the Pilgrimage of Grace Rebellion, such as Lord Darcy, Thomas Percy and Robert Constable, were still arrested and convicted of treason. On the 30th of June 1537, Lord Darcy was beheaded on Tower Hill. His head was displayed on London Bridge um, as a warning to other would-be traitors, while his body was laid to rest, according to one contemporary source, at the Crossed Friars beside the Tower of London, although it must have been moved at some point to St Botolph's in Oldgate. On the 22nd of July, 1537, Darcy was posthumously degraded from the Order of the Garter. He'd been a Knight of the Order of the Garter, but now he was a traitor, so he was posthumously degraded. And it was Thomas Cromwell, that man that the rebels had been so much against, who ended up being elected to the Order of the Garter in Lord Darcy's place. On the 12th of July 1537, according to chronicler Edward Hall, Robert Ask was hanged in chains at York. He was hanged outside Clifford's Tower, the keep of York Castle. And in November 2018, a plaque to Robert Ask was unveiled at Clifford's Tower in York, and it reads, Near this place, Robert Ask, leader of the Pilgrimage of Grace, died for his faith in 1537 martyred by Henry VIII. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 7th of April 1538, Elizabeth Boleyn, Countess of Wiltshire and the mother of Queen Anne Boleyn was laid to rest at St Mary's Church, Lambeth. You can find out more about her burial and her resting place in my video from last year, which I'll give you a link to. 
Now you can click round about there to submit to this channel. You can give me a like and leave a comment and you can also hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live. Thank you for joining me. Bye bye.